Good morning my lovely friends and happy Thursday. It is the 25th of June, six more months until Christmas. Can you believe it? Time is going so fast. It's crazy. It's been a while since I last said hi and did a vlog and chatted to you and stuff. Sorry about the radio silence. But I've been back at work. I'm working and trying to get back to a somewhat normal life. As normal as life can be these days, I suppose. I've got a few days off this week, which I'm very happy about. So I thought I would make something. <laughs> I am going to attempt to make a hoodie. Um, I have no expectations of it turning out well because as you know I am no dressmaker. I have some sense of what I'm doing but I'm not confident in my dressmaking skills because I've made things or tried to make things and they just haven't worked. I sort of get to a point in making something and I get stuck and I've got no one to ask. And I don't know what to do so I just give up but I think this hoodie is going to be quite simple. I think famous last words oh gosh before I get started this isn't a tutorial I'm not actually going to be teaching you how to make it it's just me vlogging the process uh, my hopefully not my fails and more of my successes of of making it so yeah if you've come here looking for a tutorial on me showing you how to make it then this is not what this video is but I hope you enjoy watching it uh, anyway and um, cheering me on uh, when I succeed, I'm putting it out there. It's going to work. Don't mind the washing machine going off in the background. It's a nice, lovely, homey day today. So that's just gonna do its thing. So the pattern I'm using is this Birda one. It is Birda 6718, if it wants to focus. And I'm going to be making a, just a nice, big, cozy hoodie. I'm doing it in the larger size. This is a men's pattern so I don't know what a size 46 is it's just the biggest one here I think I'll be right with the biggest size um, I do like a good oversized hoodie and I have large hips so hopefully we'll get there I've gotten everything I need for the pattern I think oh except the drawstring but I think I can I can I'll be right I'm not using that for the moment what inspired me to make a hoodie is we got some new fabric in at work and at the moment I am completely head over heels in love with all things Disney, especially Mickey Mouse. It's been an obsession that has slowly been like building and building and building and building and building. It's still building but it's kind of like gone a little bit crazy in the last month I think. But <laughs> we got this awesome like sweater fleece fabric at work and I just had to get some. It's amazing. So it's a jersey fleece and it's got uh, like the nice soft fleecy uh, behind it with the print at the front. And it was selling so quickly and I almost, I pretty much almost got the last of it off the roll. I had to move in quick because people were buying it. I was like, I've got to get in on that. So I managed to get just a little over two meters. The pattern requested for the size I'm making. Yeah, just a little over two meters so I got 2.25 so that's two and a quarter meters just to have just just in case but this is what the hoodie is going to be and I'm so excited this is also why I'm like really quite tentative about starting it because I don't want to ruin it um, I wanted to get it right because like this fabric is gold I'm going to be pairing it with just a, a black rib knit for around the cuffs and um, around the waistband and then we also did some eyelets I I think I may have got ones that were maybe a little bit too small and I got ones that were black so they're sort of fitting with um, the black accents and then I thought I had black drawstring string uh, but I've only got it in white and it looks really off with um, with the fabric because the fabric's like a, a really light grey. I also got some black overlocking thread for my overlocker or serger, whatever part of the world you're in. Um, but I realised I don't think I'm going to need to use it. I think I can get away with just the white thread that I have already on my overlocker. So 
it I won't have to change that and then in my machine I've put one of these needles this is the Schmetz jersey needle size 90 14 I'm using these needles because the fabrics are quite stretchy and obviously they're like a jersey type fabric and they're also like a quite a thicker type fabric so that size should be fine for what I need so I've got everything set up, machine is all set up and ready to go, um, overlocker will be when I'm at that stage of needing to overlock. I've read through the pattern and I feel quite confident-ish that um, I'll be able to do it. It's just the layout of the pattern, this one actually, well I haven't found a diagram of how to lay out the fabric or the pattern pieces onto the fabric yet so maybe it will have it as I start opening up the pattern pieces but yeah. We'll see. So, come along on this journey with me. Fingers crossed that it works and that I can do it and I have the patience. And yeah, it turns out well and I like it and it fits. That's always a thing. I know I should like measure myself and stuff, but I feel pretty confident that the biggest one should be fine. I just put my jump rock because it is chilly today. instructions. This is important because it's telling me how to actually make it. And now we have our pattern pieces here. This is always fun. Okay. up here how to lay out the pattern pieces on the fabric yes that's what i wanted that is what i wanted yeah oh, i keep forgetting which one i'm making i'm making a a hmm. so the dotted line means the fold line okay that's so that's the front and the back, the sleeves, the hoodie, and the pocket. Alright, that sounds doable. With other things I've done previously, I've actually traced the pattern onto like um, onto a product that we have at Spotlight. It's called Trace and Toil. So it's like a like a really thin type um, fabric that you trace patterns onto, so you're not actually cutting out the pattern pieces so you can actually preserve this and use them over and over and over again but I'm not gonna bother I think I don't really see me making this again so I think I'm just gonna go for it I'm not gonna bother um faffing around with tracing it onto something else I am however just gonna make sure it's going to be big enough because there's measurements here so let's see I probably should take my jumper off but that's okay Okay, yeah, that's fine. All right, yeah, I think we'll be okay. Okay, well, I'm going to prepare my pattern pieces and then I will bring you back when I am putting it on to the fabric and I'll show you how we make it work. So the paper pieces, just on their own, have been cut and I've done my first layout and, oh my gosh, there is so much wastage. <laughs> so much fabric wastage and it's really annoying, but, you know, it is what it is. So this is our first layout. What I've done is folded the fabric in half, right sides facing and selvages together. Up the top we have, that's the hood part. Over here is the pocket and that's on the folded line. And then here we have the sleeves. As I pin and cut them, I'll have two separate pieces of the hoodie, two sleeves, and then one long pocket because it's cut on the fold. So I'm going to pin them and cut them out first and then from the rest of the fabric we have to fold it in a different way to get our front and back of our hoodie. And then after that we need to do the pieces for the ribbing on the cuffs um, and then we'll be ready to sew. So I might do like a time lapse part of this bit because it's just going to take forever. Wish me luck. 
hopefully it all goes well. First cutting session was a success. Now we're on to doing the front and back pieces of the hoodie. So when cutting these pieces out, you have to lay out the fabric in a different type way. So I'll show you what I mean. So pattern pieces are on, but what I had to do is fold the selvage lines into the center. So we've got our two selvages there, which means we have a nice fold line along here and then another fold line here. So then we put our pattern pieces. Uh, there along the fold line so that's the back and then this piece here along the fold and this piece is the front I'm also making sure I'm putting the pattern pieces on the straight green so the straight green usually is the green that's running parallel to the selvage uh, which means especially for knits this fabric will then stretch this way around the body and not along the body right uh, so i'm going to go ahead and pin these guys together and then cut them out just like i did with the last couple of pieces Right, so all of the pieces have been cut out except for my ribbing pieces. I'll do them when it, when it comes to doing them um, because I'm just like eager to start. So I'm starting with step one and it's putting the front pocket onto the front piece. And I've just spent some time trying to figure out how to put the markings from the pattern onto the fabric um, but because it's fleece and stretchy it's proving to be a little bit difficult so I've had to use pins to sort of mark out the placement for the pocket on the front piece and then I need to figure out how I'm going to finish the edges of this and then top stitch it and then stitch it onto the front piece so so this is what I mean by the markings for the pocket on the front piece um, so this is number one, front, and these markings here mark out where you need to put the front pocket. So I'm following this darker line, and so I've just put pins just here, and then another pin doing this little part here, and then another pin doing this line here, and then another pin for that line there. So once I finish off these edges, I should then know where to sort of place that and so that it's even and in place. But before I do that, I need to, like I said, finish the edges for the pocket with a couple of overlocking stitches and then top stitch it so that it looks nice and neat and lovely. So the pocket part is all done and ready to go onto the front but I'll show you what I did. First we overlocked these edges uh, and then we folded it over on both sides and then I did a just a double stitch. It's not perfect but who cares. So they were folded over and these parts will be where the hands go in for the pockets. Then I overlocked this top edge and pressed it down about a centimeter. Then I overlocked these two edges on the side and then press them over as well. So now it is ready to go onto the front part. And what I've done is I've just put little pins here at the bottom where the pocket should sort of center up. I know it's a little bit hard to see, but these are now nice and matched with 
the pins here and it's centered and it looks good so now I'm going to sew two lines down here two lines down here and then two lines up the top to secure the pocket on to the front piece and then we'll be moving on to the next stage but that looks so cool yay Okay, pocket is on and I actually ended up doing three lines. I did the two lines first but then realized uh, this was up too much and it wasn't catching these threads from this one underneath so I had to do another stitch nice and close to the folded line. I did the same up here with the top stitch and then again here on this side so um, it managed to get all of these threads from these caught underneath there. Yeah, there is the pocket sewn on. Happy days. That is, I think, one of maybe two or three steps that I think uh, will be the hardest, but we'll see. I think the hood might be a bit tricky to put on as well as like the the uh, the binding that goes around the cuffs and the waist because I've never done that before so we'll see how that goes it's five past one I'm gonna have a break and have some lunch and we will carry on with the rest of it after lunch and hopefully maybe be able to finish it I don't know we'll see let's not get ahead of myself but at the moment we're traveling along pretty well but I've only done the first what two steps right lunch has been had I had cheesy beans on toast it was delicious with a cup of tea of course so I am very very happy and I'm ready to keep going so the next step which is step three is to put the back and the fronts together uh, so this is my back piece and as far as I know there's nothing I need to mark on this so I can just hey, take the uh, pattern piece off and so the two pieces together. So let's do that. Right, two side seams are now done. I sewed them on the sewing machine and then finished them off with the overlocker and they look really nice. I actually have my overlocker perched on the edge of my ironing board so when I'm sewing it's like ricky and rocky and bouncing all over the town. But yeah, it's like <laughs> bounce town central there but um, it's working. It's just so that I don't have to keep picking it up and putting it on there and then moving that and yeah, so... It works. I only have to use it very sparingly, so I'm happy having it there and just bouncing a little bit as I'm sewing. Moving on to the next step is the sleeves. So, let's find them in our lovely pile here. Okay, sleeves. And these were cut together, so they should be the same, <laughs> hopefully. Now, what are you telling me to do with the sleeves? So we've just done that one and this is what we're doing now. Fold the sleeves lengthwise, right sides facing in, baste sleeve and stitch and then neaten the seam. So we're pretty much just repeating the same steps as what we just did with the front and back pieces. Now we're just doing it for the seams of the sleeves. Awesome. 
easy peasy, I can definitely do that. So the sleeves have all been sewn together and now I'm up to putting the cuffs on the arms. So uh, now I've got to cut them all out. So I've just put them onto the fabric. Uh, this one is not along the fold but I have to cut out two. But then the waistband is on the fold so we've got the fold on this side. Uh, and then we'll cut them out. Moving on to the next step, uh, the ribbing has been cut and I've just sewn the two little cuffs together and they look amazing. I've never worked with this fabric before, I've never made cuffs like this before so I'm so glad that they worked. I didn't film it because the battery on my camera is getting pretty low because I've been filming so much today already. It is currently on charge while I'm recording which is one of the good things about this Sony camera. I can have it plugged in to the plug, I don't know if you can see it there, and have it charging while I'm still using it. So, now the next step is to, I think I have to bring these, I've got to bring the sleeves around the right way. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So, we have our bottom edge of our sleeve, and from what the pattern is saying, i got to pop that in there like that very awkwardly I'm gonna match up this seam from the sleeve and the seam from the cuff match them together and then pin around this top edge so and then neaten it up with the overlocker and that is the end of the sleeve and the cuff sewn together I'm pretty sure that's what it said well, let me just make sure I mean they say it just so like with very little more information and uh, if you can hear our neighbors are band sawing something I don't know they're making so much noise but that's okay um bloody bloody blue pin sleeve bands right sides together with lower sleeve edges and match the seams stitch the sleeve bands stretch to fit edge yeah that's fine Trim the seam allowances and neaten together. So yeah, basically what I just said, but uh, in a much more fluid way. Right, so I'm going to faff around and pin these like perfectly together <laughs> and uh, sew and stitch them and I'll show you what the result is. I am super proud of myself. The sleeves are done. I have used my little quilting clips uh, to do the sleeves because I just found pins are just being a little bit too awkward. So they were a lifesaver and made it a lot more easier just to pin them all together. And I overlocked it and they look so good. I've never done this before. So I'm so happy with that result. And it lines up really nice with the seams. This one looks good as well. Yes! Oh, the seams look so perfect. I am so happy with that. Just put my arm through it. Yes! Oh, there it's a little bit big, but that's okay. That's fine. That's no problem at all. Nice! Oh, I'm so happy with that. What's the next step? What is the next step? I think I'm now putting the sleeves in. Stitch sleeves. 
Pin sleeves right sides together with armhole edges, bloody bloody blue, match sleeve seams, based stitch, trim, knit them together and press. Alright, that sounds pretty straightforward. on and now we've got something that's beginning to resemble a little bit like a jumper cool <laughs> just like camouflaged in Mickey look oh it's awesome I'm so happy with this next step is to do the bottom waistband so around the bottom of the jumper and it's done exactly the same way as I did the cuffs on the sleeve so I feel pretty confident about that I think so we will get on with doing that and I'll show you what it looks like once I've done it Your waistband is on and it's looking so much more like a jumper now. It looks really, really cool. So waistband, cuffs, awesome. So now we're on to the very last bit and it is the hood part. It's our little hood and it looks pretty straightforward but you know, now that I've said that, I'm going to have issues with it. I just know it. And I also need to, in this step, put some eyelets in. So looking at the instructions and looking at the way that it is here, it's pretty much ready to go. I just have to take the paper piece off and just mark where the eyelets go and also the fold the front for the casing for the piping and yeah it's ready to sort of sew together the hood isn't lined which is kind of sucky but it is what it is let's sew this hood together and put the finishing touches on and then it'll be finished yeah. I've come to the moment where I've got to put in some eyelets. I've got my nice lovely hammer here. I love this hammer. It's the best hammer I've ever bought or used. It's just so good. It's a 450 gram or 16 ounce hammer. It's really, really good. It's like perfect. So, um, I've done eyelets once before and from memory they were pretty easy to install so I don't think I'll have any issues uh, so yeah oh, I really shouldn't say that because I just jinx myself don't I so I got one especially that has the tool with it so you get two little uh, tools like this one is got a little bit of a sharp edge to it and that's the one you cut a hole in the fabric with and then this other one has like a bit of a a dent to it it's not going to focus oh, there you go. it's got a little bit of a dent here uh, almost looks like a like a like a donut punch or something and that's the one that punches the eyelets in and secures them together when you hammer them as far as i know you only need two bits yes so the front bit which is this black one that will be the front and then the back is this little silver one so the front one is slightly taller than the 
the back one. So those two little bits just go together and you smash them together and they should sort of like come together. <laughs> there is instructions. Do 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 test. No, I'm not going to test. Work on a firm protected surface. Mark the position which I have done using the pattern. Actually, I am going to do a practice one because I want to make sure I definitely know what I'm doing. I'm going to practice on this scrap of uh, fabric. I always have like a scrap piece to make sure that the overlocker is working well and that the sewing machine is working well on the fabric that I'll be using before I actually start sewing the actual thing. So I will use this as my practice to see whether I actually do what I'm doing. So let's make a little hole. Okay, there's our little hole. The back one obviously goes on the back. And then the little black one goes on top so then we put that one there and hammer it in and they should squish together whoops oh no what have I done <laughs> it's just gone through my no that did not work what am I doing I don't know okay so I did it backwards. You're supposed to bang it in from the bottom, not the top. Uh -huh. And then that long part from the front of the eyelet bends down and attaches to the back little eyelet. So then you have ta -da, an eyelet like that so you can put something through it. I feel confident enough to do that on the real thing. Let's give it a go. Let's make the hole. Awesome. The front one or the black one first and then the back goes on to the back and then we hammer them together. Okay, success! My two little eyelets are in. So there's one here on Mickey's ear and the other one is here yay okay so next bit is we have to fold over and do the little front facing for where you insert the cord okay so the hood is done. I just finished doing the front part for where you put the cord in. Then I had to baste uh, the two little ends closed. So this is where the holes for the cord is. And then I sort of had to overlap the fronts uh, before I attach it to the top of the jumper. Which is what the next step is. Uh, so... Let's try and figure this out. Oh, everything has to be inside out. Okay, I should have had centre front marks, I think, but I don't. Centre back. Alright, I'm going to try and figure this out and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. <laughs> So without having placed any center marks, I think I've been able to center it quite nicely, the hood that is, onto the top. Again, I use the little uh, quilt clips because they're just so much easier just to quickly pop onto the seams. So let's sew this last seam together and I think we'll be finished. I'm so proud of myself. Uh, 
Okay, I think I finished, <laughs> except for of course putting the cord through the hoodie bit because I don't have it, but I think it's finished. I think everything's fine. That last seam was the hardest so far. It's always the way. The last seam is always the hardest to sew. It wasn't hard, it was just tricky. But yeah, it's finished. Moment of truth. I'm taking my jumper off and I'm gonna try this on. Hopefully it fits. It is going to be a little bit snug, I can tell already, but that's okay. snug around my lovely pear-shaped hips but I am very happy with that. Oh, that is a decent sized hood. Wow! I love it! Yay! Oh my gosh I think this is one of the most successful things I have ever made. Yay! With the hood up and obviously once I put the cord in I'll be able to gather it and yeah it is so warm and snuggly I'm so happy with it oh, successful day yay this could not have been any more successful I think and I'm so surprised that I actually did it and I'm so proud of myself that I did it no real major mistakes and it was actually a lot easier than what I thought it was going to be but still it tested me and um yeah I think very much suits my level of of dressmaking all right well I'm going to go show this off to everyone thank you for joining me today I hope this inspired you to make your own hoodie you can do it it is so easy all of the information that I think is important in Making this hoodie will be in the description below if you're interested. Thanks for joining me on this very successful day. I am exhausted. I'm going to go and make a cup of tea and enjoy my beautiful snuggly hoodie that I made myself. Yay! Yeah.